Air contains substantial amounts of energy. There's just not enough energy in wind in its natural state to produce enough energy on an annual basis to make it really truly competitive against coal or natural gas. Essentially renewable energy kind of needs a step change. Planet Earth. By the year 2050, the world's population will have reached 9.3 billion people. The resources that sustain our civilization will become increasingly scarce. Where can we turn for solutions to these seemingly insurmountable challenges? Join us as we meet a new generation of visionaries who are intent on the human race flourishing. Wind. Since the Neolithic age, when animal hides were used as primitive sails, wind power has been the engine of human industry. Current estimates place available wind power at 74 terawatts, or more than five times the world's current energy use. In recent times, readily available fossil fuels have supplanted wind power and other alternative energies. However, an inventor in Boston has designed a wind acceleration module that will more than double the energy that can be captured from available wind. When fully realized, this technology will dramatically expand the viability of urban wind generation. My name is Rob Ferreira. I founded uh, V Squared Wind. We create wind accelerating machines to produce more power out of the wind and make it cheaper. Air contains substantial amounts of energy. In terms of the renewables, it's actually by far the best, most cost-effective renewable. That said, it still costs about 40 or 50 percent more than burning coal. The reason being is that it's just, in its natural state, there's a limit to how much you can collect. There's a secondary problem. You go to some place like Texas where the wind's blowing at 10 meters per second all year long. Um, the problem is it's in the middle of nowhere. And there just simply isn't the transmission capacity to get the energy from Texas to the Northeast or to Chicago or to LA where they need the energy. So where everybody's using the energy, there really isn't sufficient wind resource to make it economically competitive. One of the ways of getting the step change potentially is by accelerating the wind and increasing the amount of power in it. What we use is we use a specially designed nozzle. Based on the amount of the narrowness, it will increase the velocity. And if you can increase the velocity, you can increase the power. If you look at the intake area relative to the throat, this one is about a, a 1 to 2.75 ratio. Um, this one will achieve, depending on the speed and how fast the rotor is going, it'll achieve about 2.6 to 2.75 times the wind that this is seeing, which translates to about you know, 20 times the power. And once it starts going, you'll see that the acceleration in the throat is substantially higher than the external one. Not only do we accelerate the wind, but we accelerate it in modules. So essentially it's a modular technology. So in that way it's actually kind of similar to solar. So it can be deployed from relatively small machines that could supply, say, a community, like 100 or 200 houses, up to sizes that could supply 5,000 houses. One plan for this technology calls for reclaiming derelict urban structures and converting them into huge multi-story arrays. This would create an efficient, clean and renewable energy source for the community while eliminating the complications of long distance transmission. Essentially, you know, look at it as a massive distributed wind farm in an urban area. It's kind of the same ideas that, you know, people are toying around with with urban farms. You know, find some roof space, plant some stuff, you know, produce the tomatoes locally. Instead of looking at, you know, 40 square miles of wind farms in somebody's backyard, you're going to places where there's nobody there at, you know, a three acre industrial facility to care that you're putting one of these things there. We're operating with an energy system and method of producing energy that's 150 years old. Our political atmosphere is not in a place right now like it was, say, in 1960 with the interstate highway system or 1940 with World War II, where we're willing to just bite the bullet and do it on a public basis. If we actually decide to do this and just absorb the cost, we can do it even now. There's total reason to have hope.